Christ is risen, hallelujah. Hello, I'm the Reverend Lynn Green and I'm General Secretary of Baptists Together and I wanted to share with you the greetings of the wider Baptist family on this special day. In the midst of all the Good Fridayness of life at the moment, it's really great that we can come together to proclaim and celebrate our risen Lord Jesus Christ today. And I also wanted to take the opportunity to assure you that many people have been praying for you and I am certainly included in that. Today as a church, I want you to know that you are unique, you are beautiful and that God's smile is on you. You know, it doesn't matter what you're doing or not doing at the moment. What matters is who you are and that God loves and cares for you and holds you and that you are his. So I pray that today that you would rejoice and rest in the Lord our God. And I pray that you would know the hope and the love and the life of the resurrection in you and through you in the days to come. Welcome to this Easter morning message. I'm Hilary Taylor, a small church enabler for the London Baptist Association. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We celebrate today with people across the country from our smaller churches. We have much to celebrate despite the current strange and unusual circumstances. Jesus died, he was buried, and he was raised from the dead by the power of God. He is alive, hallelujah. Let us pray together. Almighty God, when everything was dark and it seemed that the sun would never shine again, your love broke through. Your love was too strong, too wide, too deep for death to hold. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus. We praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witnesses of resurrection. We praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. We pray that the Easter light of life, hope and joy will live in each of us today and that we will be bearers of that light into the lives of others. In Jesus' name, Amen. I am delighted that Ken Benjamin, the President of the Baptist Union, has prepared a message for us today. The transcript will be available to download so you can print a copy to send to your church members who can't connect with us today. Happy Easter and God bless you. It'd be well worth pausing at this stage and reading John 20, 1-16. So let me say thank you to Hilary and to Lynn for opening up this service for everyone. Happy Easter, everybody. I hope and pray this message finds you well wherever you are listening to this or, or watching it. One of the headlines that I've seen and one of the comments that I've heard during this coronavirus lockdown season is that everything has changed and you can understand that comment can't you really from the perspective of the coronavirus pandemic so much has changed our level of certainty about things has changed so many of the things we possibly took for granted a lot of future plans have changed for many people perhaps you too our mobility some of our freedoms to travel have changed greatly income may have changed for many of you health and well-being concerns have changed a lot has changed and has changed so fast that i don't even know where we will be at by easter sunday in terms of our news when you read this at the time of recording this our prime minister boris johnson is in intensive care and we should pray for him and for our government. We're called to pray for those in, lead in leadership and those who are unwell. And currently at the time of recording, our Prime Minister is both of those things. So it's easy to see or to perhaps think that everything has changed. But I want to ask the question, has everything changed? And we'll make a change to our drawing as we do that. My son Alex is finding himself at home while we're recording this back from university like so many and we're using the tradition that has found itself part of the global phenomenon of this time of 
people doing chalk drawings and messages and messages of hope and part of my message of hope is has everything changed i don't think so a lot has changed but not everything you haven't changed your loved ones and those close to you haven't changed the values that we hold dear haven't changed the qualities that we would prize love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control the fruit of the spirit Th those things haven't changed when i hear that list i think we need those qualities even more perhaps in this season but but they haven't changed and i would want to affirm and remind ourselves on this easter day that our god hasn't changed in fact if i think of a time when everything change if i think of a season when things change things didn't change in 2020 or 2019 in china with the start of the coronavirus things didn't start then but on easter sunday in terms of everything changing really if we think about what changed then the message of life and death and the opportunity for reaching out to god changed so radically then mary magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance that's a sign of change that's when everything changed really so we'll change this to the message that i really want us to consider which is when everything changed and we'll take the question mark away from that thanks alex when did everything change when Jesus changed the rules of life and death. When I think of the stone being rolled away, as is referred to in that John 20 reading, what that points to is that death has been defeated. That's real change. When I read the account of that stone being rolled away, my, my heart leaps and my head is encouraged my heart leaps because it points to the risen jesus the first easter sunday sign of that in the morning if you like and my head is encouraged because i've been through the various options for the stone being rolled away like so many of you have and i can find no logical conclusion other than it's the power of god and the risen jesus from a head knowledge intellectual uh, confidence point of view i love the honesty of the account in the Gospels including this account in John's Gospel because you simply don't deliberately add misunderstandings and mistakes into a written account of history unless it's true because it doesn't help your reasoning the, the, the point that you want to convey otherwise Mary and the disciples keep getting things wrong and yet they're willing to note down their mistakes verse 2 um, and we don't know where they've put him, they say. That's a misunderstanding. Verse 9, they still didn't understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Why would you write that unless it was true? Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look at the tomb. Still not understanding what's going on, verse 11. Verse 14, as she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. Verse 15, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where they've put him and I will get him. I love the turned round bit. It might give us the idea that Mary's looking in the wrong direction. She's looking at the tomb where Jesus has been. And only when she turns and faces Jesus does hope and help come you simply don't make that stuff up but it makes the testimony so much more trustworthy and so much more something that we can put our confidence in this is a season where amidst the turmoil amidst the change people it seems to me are looking for places to put their trust in so people put their trust in the government they put their trust in the chief medical officers they put their trust in the scientists in us finding a vaccine in the nhs these are all good things they're things that we should and the people behind them are people that we should pray for but they're not where we place our trust i place my trust in the creator god of the universe the creator of life and the one who on easter day changed the rules of life and death and in our reading then then he meets her jesus meets mary 
Magdalene. It was the custom in Palestine to visit the grave three days or so or, or thereabouts afterwards after a death. And that phrase for early morning, it means very early morning, maybe 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. In this season of changings of patterns of sleep, maybe you've experienced those hours. And, and they discover the risen Jesus, but not straight away. Amid the confusion and desperation, all of that melts away when he calls her name. And in our time of confusion, when people are at their lowest ebb, the presence of the risen Jesus changes everything. To Mary belongs the honour of being the first to recognise the risen Jesus. But it isn't a race. We can all acknowledge and recognise him today. Our God changes things from bad to good. He does that through the Easter story. He doesn't create the bad, but he turns it around for good. My friend Phil Knox produced a spoken word poem very recently that takes us from the bad of Good Friday to the good of Easter Sunday. It's called The Comeback. Let's have a look at that video now. It's finished. It's over. There's more of them than us and they look a lot bigger. The villain's got the girl and his fingers on the trigger. Voldemort, Sauron and Vader reign. It's gone to penalties against the Germans again. It's a terrible feeling when hope is erased, faith misplaced, virtue defaced, gloom embraced, reputation replaced with the taste of disgrace. When you've pushed every door and it's been slammed in your face, when you realise you're third in a two horse race. So come sit with me on Golgotha's slopes. See human history at its lowest ebb. See the forces of goodness and grace on the ropes. Evil had spoken, last rites read. In a phony gown and thorny crown, he's mocked and knocked and shamed. As he staggers down through an angry town, they spit and hit and hate. Hands that forged galaxies and flung starry trails are pierced and punctured by merciless nails. His body succumbing to brutal infliction. These, the horrors of crucifixion. And as dice are tossed, hope is lost. Desolate disciples count the cost. King of the Jews, his headrest embossed. A criminal's killing on Calvary's cross. And as last words cut through foul-smelling air, the whole of the cosmos cries out in despair. It is finished. It's over. But then dawn breaks on Easter day. Darkness quakes as shadows give way to the light. See, resurrection's the plan, it's why God sent him. And the comeback's on, there's a change of momentum. The powers of damnation in previous jubilation have been hushed and crushed by the Lord of creation. See, he takes the hit, stands where we should have stood, and that's why we call Friday good. And he's back with life and with us and blessed. And that's why we can know it as Sunday best. So to the four nil down, to the backs against the wall, Listen to his rallying resurgent call. And to those up against it in brokenness and pain, Easter's story roars, we go again. So thine be the glory, death lost its sting. Here's to Jesus, the comeback king. I love that piece that Phil brought to us, whether you were just listening to it or whether you, you were watching it. If you were listening to it, let me say that at one point he stands on a peak on a mountain top type area and he says these, the simple word, but. Yes, there's all of this negative around Good Friday, but the risen Jesus, it changes everything is the sentiment of what he's bringing to us. Jesus is the comeback king. We go again, he says. We're in a time where we're being asked to limit ourselves for the sake of saving other people's 
lives. It's a message that makes sense. Stay at home and reduce the risk of transmission of a disease for other people. It's a message that we can and should all grasp. But we should also grasp that the message of limiting oneself for the sake of saving lives was shown first, was shown bigger and more perfectly in Jesus Christ our Saviour who limited himself in coming to earth and limited himself further in the sacrifice that he paid for each one of us. There was a time when everything changed in terms of everything that really matters in terms of the way we view life and death and that was Easter. Access to God changed. He's now reachable for each one of us. Eternal hope changed because Jesus paved the way for us. Maybe you know and remember the song Because He Lives. It's not particularly trendy but the lyrics resonate for me today. There's a verse in it that says, but greater still the calm assurance. This child can face uncertain days because he lives. Because he lives I can face tomorrow. Because he lives all fear is gone. That uncertain days bit is right, isn't it? And I pray that all fear is gone would be a progressive truth for us. Don't feel extra guilt if you don't have all fear gone. It's something that progressively becomes true for us. If you're somebody who has extra anxiety, don't compare yourself to somebody who doesn't. But I would pray that you have greater peace because God is in your life. And what we see in our reading is that makes a difference to an individual. Mary has the honour of being the first person that happens to, but very much not the last. Each one of us can experience that ourselves. And Mary goes again, like our reading, like that dramatic spoken word piece says, verse 18, Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had all the... Th things he had said these things to her I say that again and she told them that he had said these things to her the coronavirus changes a lot of things but it doesn't change everything Easter makes all the difference in the world it is when everything that mattered changes in that sense and it changes things in terms of the way we live now it changes the hope we have for tomorrow and it changes our hope for eternity. So as we come to pray this morning, we want to say, Lord Jesus Christ, you are alive. Alleluia. On this day, this Easter day, we say that Jesus is not abandoned to the grave because God has raised him to life. And so, Lord, we rejoice because today you are exalted to God's right hand. You have triumphed over death because of your love for us. You have won the victory. And we say, Alleluia. Let's come and let's pray together. Lord Jesus, risen King Jesus, thank you that today you walk with us along the dusty road. In the hard places we find ourselves this Easter Sunday. Lord, in the same way you were not abandoned to the grave, neither have you abandoned us. Lord Jesus, we know in the days after you rose again, you sat, broke bread, cooked fish and ate with your friends. Would you come and eat with us now? Feed us and have mercy on us, Lord. In your mercy, come and walk alongside us. Lord Jesus, you invited your friends to tell you all that was concerning them. You asked them to tell you everything they were discussing as they trudged along the road. And so we come to you to tell you all that is on our hearts and all about what concerns us, what we have in our minds today. And so in a moment's silence now, we're going to bring our prayers to God who accompanies us. We can share all that we hold in our hearts, all that is on our minds, all that is in our souls, the pain and the joy. Let's just have a moment's silence as we bring those things to our risen Lord Jesus.
May the eyes of our hearts be enlightened in order that we may know the hope to which he has called us, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparable great power for us who believe. Lord, you are the hope bringer. And so, Lord, we pray today for our friends, for our families, for our neighbours who need to know something of your hope now. And again, in the silence, let's name some of those people before the Lord. Lord, bringer of light and hope, we pray for others now. We want to pray particularly for those who are working in the NHS today. And maybe there are people that you know, maybe names and faces that you already have on your mind. But there are also faces and names that are known to God. And so we want to bring all of that now in this moment of silence to the Lord, who is the bringer of light and hope. Thank you, risen Lord, for your Holy Spirit poured out on us so that we can be witnesses to the life of Jesus in our world today. Lord, we know, we proclaim today that you are alive and active in our world, even in the hidden places of our world. May we be hope bringers in the places where we live. Lord, may we be witnesses of your power witnesses to our neighbours and to our communities right where we live today. Lord, we pray for your peace. We pray that your resurrection power be known in the homes that surround us. And Lord, as we are witnesses today of your resurrection, as we cry out that Jesus is Lord and testify to his incomparable love, may all hear and know that you, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, may every tongue confess that you are Lord, to the glory of God our Father. Amen.